So welcome back to Wardy's Weekly Waffle, except this is an extra one in the middle of the week because last week, Reuben, Tom and myself went across to Suffolk to Clayton Machinery to have a look around the factory and have a bit of a presentation from Simon Revel, who's the marketing and export manager. And also Jeff Clayton spent a few hours with us as well. And of course, Jeff founded the company a few years ago. So thank you very much for both of you for taking up your whole time. Uh, we got there at about 9.30 in the morning uh, after a bit of a detour around the M11. We uh, called up McDonald's halfway um, halfway there and then uh, on this new road we actually um, missed the turning and so we had to do a bit of a detour around to get back onto the onto the road. But we got there in the end and thank you very much for the whole uh, few hours we were there. It was really fascinating and I must say after being involved with Simon at Simba many years ago and helping to do a lot of uh, the presentations and a lot of foreign visits it brought back memories of those and after all the presentations I've sat through it was probably one of the most fascinating and interesting three-hour presentations that we've uh, I've seen and involved so much thought-provoking stuff to get your head around a lot of it about soil and about uh, fuel and everything so I'm going to put some snippets of that in this update so please bear with me the whole of this updates maybe going to be approaching half an hour so so click forward and fast and go through it as you like but there's a lot of fascinating things on the slides that they've put through about costs um, and also then we go around the factory and have a look around but um, I'd forgotten that Jeff Clayton actually um, invented or he was designed the Clayton yielder meter so the very first yield meter we had on the combine uh, was thanks to Jeff Clayton um, and he goes through the history of that which is fascinating here in that and also Jeff explains the furrow cracker if you remember that knife type um, extra arm that was down on the side of ploughs to help break up the soil Jeff imported that from abroad so we have a few minutes looking at that as well and the number of units sold and then we get on to the Clayton drills and everything so rather than um, do this in my weekly Sunday um, waffle and update I thought it was better to do this one on its own and I'll continue to do this on other machines that we have and other visits and other things we do whether we have our agri open days and everything like that so um, yes yeah, so please I uh, say it won't be for everyone this one but bear with me, rattle through it as you like, but we get into looking at fields, we look at the drills being built in the factory and, and everything about it, and really, really impressive setup. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for everybody who was there. Um, also, just to touch on our drilling day, we had a, a good meeting a um, couple of days ago with, with Agri, with Fred, our agronomist, and Steve, who helps us with the trials from Agri. We've actually got the date set, and I apologise, I might have got it wrong in one of my updates uh, a week or two ago. We've actually got our direct drilling day set of April the 6th. So please put that in your diaries. I will come on here and give you a bit more detail in the next week or two. But just at the moment, April the 6th, all day, I'm hopefully having 11 different direct drills planting barley in the same field. It's a bit later than what we wanted, but I'm just a bit concerned that the weather's going to even out. We've had a very dry November, uh, December and January, really, and I just think that we might end up having a wet spring. Um, but anyway, this just gives us a chance to get everybody get workload done, farm work up to date, and, uh, and then we'll crack on from there and get this drilling day. So 6th of April, everybody, please put it in your diary. You will need to register, but I will give you more details. Just, I'm in the background here. I've got the field. We had our Clayton drill running. This was it running um, at the end of October. And then this is the crop now. I'll just turn the camera around and you'll see it. But really good concept. Uh, and we have got the Clayton drill coming um, on our day, but I will get into the details of which machines are coming um, uh, in another week or two's time. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, everybody. Um, there won't be an outtake of this at the end, uh, and uh, we'll crack on with this. But as I say, hope you enjoy it. Please come back with any questions. Thank you very much for watching and for subscribing. And here we go. So I've just arrived at Clayton's Machinery in Suffolk with Reuben and Tom, and we're going to be looking at the Clayton system with direct drilling and the way they use their equipment and looking at the factory, how the machinery is made. Presentation from Simon Revel, who's the export manager. I've known Simon a long while. We used to do a lot of work together abroad uh, with Simba. Hopefully Jeff will be here as well. So we're gonna have a few hours looking around to the factory and I'm gonna be doing this as a separate Wardy's Weekly Waffle Extra because I think it's gonna be a whole program in itself. So we'll post this midweek and then I'll do the normal weekly waffle update on a Sunday. So here we go. And try to sell it to them because we haven't got any engineering. We've just got a small farm workshop. 
We hadn't even got the one down the bottom in 1980. That was built in 1984. So there was nothing here. No. So I went to the local man's or class and said to them, you know, I've got this idea on a combine. And they said, oh, we'll get a pattern on it. So I got the pattern and everything and um, said to them, well, this would work. And I was talking to Lawrence Rook, and you'd know Lawrence. Yeah. And, and he, he, he and I, and he said, oh, Jeffy says, you know, class is not going to do anything. And I got really cross. This was about June time. I said, well, if they're not going to do anything, I will. So I went out and I designed this um, elevator head with, with the paddle measuring. I came into the workshop down here. My cousin came to see me and, he, and I was cutting up this old Dominator 80 elevator up because it was different yeah. to the, it had the same going up into the tank and making this paddle wheel to fit in it. And he said, you must be bonkers cutting your good combine about <laughs> One of your crazy ideas, uh, yeah. And we had a bail count counting the paddle revolutions, and and we worked out we had a small bucket, weighed it to get the density, and if we had 330 counts on the bail counter, that was one ton of wheat. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we have a calculator in the cab. This is the prototype, and what we did we we literally used to divide the counts on the bail counter by whatever the relevant bucket weight was. Once we weighed one and calibrated it, we knew that yeah. we had 360 counts on wheat, we had say 400 on barley, um, because it was all relevant, and it measured the exact volume through the paddle. So what we did, we went to, we sold 400 tons down to the local merchants at Clare, because we never had any good grain storage or anything. Cars are all on 10 ton trailers, and we're going in there and saying, this one's 9.8 tons. <laughs> And they said, where are you getting your weights from? Because you're more accurate than what the weight bridge is, because we can only make measures to 20 kilograms and you've given us the weight Incredible. within yeah, the 20 yeah. kilograms. And so we knew, fundamentally, we had a fantastic mm. accurate sensor for measuring. And how many of those have you sold? Are you still selling them? No, no. no. It was quite, quite a sad story, really, because we fitted several combines and licensed the Shelbourne Reynolds, because we never had yeah. any building engineering facilities here in 83. Um, we, we got it going nicely in those first two years. We built the sales up to about 150 machines a year and worked with a small company in Sudbury called Roby Dome. Oh yeah, yeah. Because they do the, 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 the sprayers uh, yeah. control box. That's right. Yeah. Of, yeah. And they, they built us a box with two readouts, one for tons and one for area. And that was a simple box yeah. we had for a start. And then what happened, we licensed it to Shelbourne's, which unfortunately, they tried to take the next jump to the best electronics, but at that time, electronics weren't no. up to what they are today. And so consequently, they couldn't get reliable readings because the computers would lock out mm. for short periods and miss signals coming in, and they get the wrong reading. So we took the product back in about 1986 and worked exclusively with class and we sold yielder meters all over Europe, and that's what started playing yielder meter big time. Yeah, so when did you actually finish doing them? And we built those yielder meters all the way from 86. Merv George was there at the time, he said, I'll make your day claim, and I ordered 20 yielder meters off you. And that was really the start. I spent 25 grand just on electronics back then to be able to give the readings of how many tons an hour we were doing, what the spot yield was, and everything else. Mm. And we were very successful. We sold like 100 yield meters every year to class for the UK um, and fitted those down in Saxon mm. through till about 1996. And unfortunately, in 1996, they bought the Lexian range of combines out when the elevator changed. Yeah. And we were unable to fit them, and they had their own one. So we got made redundant in supplying yielder meters. But we were, um, yielder meters came to an end and we, we, we literally said to him, well, well, we reckon we could break up our old clay soil with that behind the plow while it's still soft and malleable. We can take it apart and make it into a more of a seedbed, which is what exactly what it did. Yeah. And so we got one over in April of about 95 and we had set aside, so we got a field of set aside that we're allowed to plow up and put it on there. We made the mistake of showing a few people. 
Well, it went berserk. We were having to make the brackets to fit them to all the flowers. So we were out there with a notepad designing all the brackets and making those in a small workshop down there. And, and that product we were selling, um, we'd sold over a thousand, we'd sell about a hundred of those a year. The very first year in 95, we said, we'll bring 12 over, this poor little Bavarian manufacturer. Yes, I'll do that for you, Jeff, he says. So he builds us 12. And by the time they arrived, everybody had seen this and they suddenly wanted one. And by September, we sold 120, not 12. Wow. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you can see there. Um, you but this, this, I'll, I'll put this up just because, sorry, Jeff. You're okay. If you look at this, this is what the IMF put out. So if you can, it, and it tracks what the real wheat price was from 1960 to 2007. And you can see back in 75, that there was a hell of a boon on there. Then decided we'd do something very different or we needed to do something very different because we weren't making any money um, we were losing money and we've got to do something really different V formation we called the V drill and we made about 100 of these drills and, and sold all over the place we had one go over to Latvia, Lithuania and 2004 it's a wet autumn and it's really puffy behind the flowers and that and what we found was the V formation had about 400 millimeters clearance. And if we have puffy conditions and it's wet, it didn't quite have enough clearance. With a stone release, the grape was soil, and we followed it with the A share to place the seed. And in the meantime, we'd gone from drilling rape to every crop that you could combine harvest. And we found that we had the same effects with those crops. We had better rooting, we had better, stronger crops. We saw no weirlings in the field that took all those out. And up to six meters mounted, which is really popular. And when did these come out? When did you bring these? 2009, we came out with the hybrid drill and we've been selling in 2012, we sold six million pounds worth of um, mounted drills. So on next slide here. Yeah, well, we'll go back, Jeff, and then once we've done that, then we'll go through the, the sure, whole, Jeff, you, you, yeah. through all the, yeah. sort of current politics and all that. Yeah. So so this thing is just incredible. So if we look at, and there's no guidance on this, apart from the guy and see. And you can see this is a, a customer in Germany, and we've got several working in Germany. And you can see the speed that we, which is going at. Because looking at this, my only thought, when you look at the, the wheeling damage and things, you're running actually on top of the rows, aren't you? On top of your wheat. But it, it come, grows away from it. Yeah, yeah. No, they, big tyres and good cleats mm. is the yeah. secret. And if nobody was sort of looking at putting, say, narrow tyres on or, or twin narrow tyres yeah. like yeah. you should have eaten. And GPS. Because yeah. yeah. I said that just to you, yeah. didn't I? Yeah. And, and you've got good cleats that walks on the top and the soil is dry. You can't get any more up to date than that. But you can see here that the bulk of those guys are over eight tonnes. And it's interesting that Belgium and Holland, or the Netherlands as they are now, plus Germany and us are at the top of the tree. Okay, if you look at our country going back to 1270, what is interesting in this is a correlation, as Jeff said, when we get to 1970, everything went boom, you know, because of technology, because of fertilizer usage, chemical, etc. Yeah, three years ago after one Christmas, and this guy is a plow power harrow drill combination user. And you can see here, he's got two compacted layers, one here, under the power harrow, and then he's got the deeper one under the plow pan. And it just shifted all the saw, and there's a road at the bottom there, and it was, you know, he got prosecuted in the end because it was blocking the road. I mean, not blocking, you could drive over it, but there was all the soil. So it gives you some idea of what goes on, and then we've got this issue with wind, which the area north of here, the other side of where Spencer lives. On World Soil Day that the Rivers Trust came up with, they were claiming that 84% of our top soil since 1850 has been eroded. So that's that at a rate of one to three centimetres a year. So if you look at that, you can see after the EU28, and we would be included in that at that time, there's an erosive, what they call erosive prone areas, that's going to be bad because they have some really bad intensive rainfall. And uh, the UK, we're down the end here. I did, this did make me laugh when I pulled this up, because they sort of separated us. Perhaps they knew something about Brexit in 2016, but we didn't. <laughs> thinking and that's what excites me so much about this oh he's got it you manage 
Oh, cheers. Terra soil, healthy, we've got that as kilograms. So you can imagine just how many there are. And if I took a, tea, a tablespoon, I think it's a tablespoon, dessert spoon, there's more bacterial life in there than there is people on the planet. Okay, see it's drainage as well. So worms are really, really important. And that big fella is the ones that you want. You get more of those and it's really positive. So I, it's all relative. So that's the actual, um, what the operating or what the wheat production costs are. And they picked out these countries. And because we've got the enviable task in there like our German cousins, where we're some of the most expensive to produce a ton of wheat. But he's been into the system and he's got very heavy soil, but he's been into the system now for six years, I think. Okay. But what is interesting is look at his yields. 10 ton a hectare. And he's 10 ton a hectare. And this is monitor farm, so there's no bullshit in there. But the actual crop production costs, 35% is harvesting roughly. You can't do a lot with that, you've got to harvest. You need a team to harvest and everything else. So that really is almost gonna, gonna keep at that price unless you you know, go from say two combines to one combine and have a big mm. big output, depending on how many hectares you've got. And, you, and you've, your crop maintenance is pretty much there, I think, isn't it? Isn't so it? establishment's 44%, harvesting's 35 Yeah. And maintenance, so that's fertilising and, and yeah, spraying and that sort of thing. Yeah, it's twenty one. Yeah. yeah. But what that's what you know, this guy's murdering the soil almost, and then you think of all the other problems that he's creating as well, and that's why he's starting to get, mm. you know, real problems with yields. So, but, so Jeff, just that figure, twenty seven pounds per, per hectare, hectare yeah. of establishment per for a ten ton a hectare for a ten ton a hectare crop. So two pounds seventy per ton. Yep. of grain produced that cost yep. to establish that crop. To establish your crop. Fascinating, and that's the one with the circle around it. Yeah, I mean, you can have this slide out. Look in, so you can see the minimum on this column, and then you've got the maximum with the highest 25%, and then they were looking at the averages here. And you can see that there's a hell of a difference in there. Um, where was charging six, six pounds for the uh, cone? Sorry, Tom. Who is charging six, six pounds for cone? Yeah, blunt blades on rake, new sharp blades, or turn the blades for wheat and barley and the stores. Finish the rake, put the new blades in. Yeah, and there you go. 100%. Mm -hmm. And make sure the stationary blades are in good condition as well. Yeah. Because a lot of people, some of the Eastern European guys, will buy a combine that's down spec and they'll only have one row of stationary blades in. Have you got any figures for your fuel use then on chopping? Project. You know, say with your blades in or out, or new blades, old blades, because that can make a difference. The difference between new blades and old blades, twenty five percent in fuel at least. So say so again, twenty five percent more fuel used with blunt blades than there is with sharp blades. <laughs> it's, it's but then you've got the cost of the blades to look at. Yeah. But that's interesting. But you, you, with the cost of diesel now, it's not long before you catch up again. No. Yeah. Okay. Most farms have a Cambridge roll, so again. As your soil changes, you'll see, as Jeff can get away with now, we can straw harrow instead of actually rolling in certain conditions. All that happens. And that's using 1.7 litres of diesel per hectare. 1.7 litres of diesel. Effectively with a rate, but you'll be about 80, 90% control. And, and you'll start another generation off as long as you rake and then leave it about two to three weeks and let it green up and then use the guy say brilliant result mm -hmm. you just move to kill it the worst scenario is when you've got no tilt and the straw harrow just goes over and doesn't do anything because anything growing doesn't get wiped out because you haven't got any avalanche mm -hmm. you know it's like a little snowstorm isn't it and uh, it's like having an avalanche down side the mountain. We won't survive on skis or snowboards if we run over by an avalanche, will we? <laughs> yeah, sound yeah. Like is that right? <laughs> That's a lot better now. <laughs> so what this shows is actually the machine working graphically. So this happens to be in Germany with our distributor sleeper. So this shows how the actual drills are the leading time and what that does in the soil. And because of that rake on there, we're not going to haul up a load of wet, horrible stuff generally it's only 20 mil wide but we put these micro fissures in and that's where we get this nice drainage in the routine development so you can see and then the a share comes in and it allows the seed to be put underneath which you would have seen last year this happens to be in spain 
on a bit of a floodplain there, but there's a lot of trash. So you can see that the drill can cope with a fair amount of trash. And then uh, the seed is spread across in the band and we can change the band width by the A-share. So you can see there, we can make that wider. And then the roots ready to go off. The ski board actually moves a bit of saw back over the seed and just firms it lightly, not too much. And then we finish off leveling with the following harrow. Very sticky so we've got we can put a fur down below and we can put it with the seed, which most of the drills that I spell on export are sold like that, particularly with trail drills. And that obviously then allows the rooting to go down and then we get a really good stand. And that's, that's from here. And that's the cropping that we're getting. So it's, it's very simple. It, it, it sounds, I think the most important thing with that is to make sure that you understand what you're doing and the limitations of it and, and how it works. But change that on the A-share. So if you want a narrower, um, a, 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 um, a narrower row, but we tend to go for the wider one, which is seven inch, 180 mil, and try and keep that one. If we're drilling right, then what we may well use is a worn agent on your leading time, or you can combine both if you wish. So it just depends. Um, because of the fertilizer restrictions, I think that's a good way of applying it. Well, it is factual, we wouldn't say it otherwise. So you improve your productivity, your yield's gonna be good, your costs are going to be massively reduced. Benefits to the soil, you lose, you're moving less soil so you're not um, releasing carbon, moisture preservation and erosion reduction on the soil and time saving. We use, so we're using a 15 metre straw harrow uh, with a 300 horsepower farm tractor. Uh, we're straw harrowing, uh, we're achieving 28.6 hectares an hour and we're only using 1.7 litres of diesel per hectare. And that's pretty average. It, it varies between 1.6 and 1.9, but most of the time it's running about 1.7. And then you'd, you'd say you'd, you'd do that sometimes up to four times. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you think about that, think of that figure. And then if we add the drill to the scenario, so the same tractor again with the T6C, which is the smaller brother to the T6, so it's got a smaller hopper on a slightly different chassis. And this, we are using 6.6 .6 litres of diesel um, per hectare. So if you start adding that up, you know, we're about 14 to 16 litres of diesel crop established. Four, pa four passes with a 15 metre straw harrow with that tractor, mm. with, that, with that 300 horsepower tractor, roughly comes to the same cost as one pass with the old 24 metre trail spray that we had on the farm with a robust amount of roundup at about four, mm. four and a half mm. metres per hectare. Mm. But then of course with your straw harrow, you're doing a lot at slugs and things yes, like that. Yes, that's right, exactly. And we're encouraging much, much more rubbish to grow. And it's not just about encouraging the black grass, you know, we're getting more volunteers to grow, we're getting more bald leaves, weeds, the, those quick ones that go quickly. And it, it, and it makes the whole job easier. So this is your main workshop where everything's built? This is the main workshop. We're building hoes and straw harrows and terra stars in this quarter. Yeah. And just over here we've got a three metre drill, seed and fertiliser, you can see the hopper there. Yeah. Um, being built up. And then as we go around, we're, we're looking at the trail drill manufacturer. These are T6s. Um, you can see they're three virtually built in the back. So that where it says bay one? Build bay one, that's a six metres, that's it. T6. Six metres, T6, yeah. Yeah. Um, they haven't got the seed hoppers on. We're just waiting for those to come in. They've been delayed due to COVID. Yeah. Um, so they'll be in shortly and we'll be putting those on. Two of those are going over to Denmark. Mm. And I'm not sure where the third one's going, but there's a fourth one being built in the foreground here. Yeah. And the fifth one you can see by the JCB. Normally we have more mounted drills being built in here. But at the moment, we're going through a campaign of the trail drills. Yeah. And we have a new 
build our European assembly, assembly shop in the middle of the yard going up 36 metres square and I'll have four cranes wow. in there so That'll be good. when we do the trail drills in there. What, what's this here? This is a centre chassis frame for a T6 um, drill. Uh, you can have it as a 6 metre or an 8 metre, it's the same chassis. You can see all the hydraulics being put in and the seeding unit. Yeah. And the separate independent seeding frames laying behind it here. And you can see it all assembled. Oh, there. Right. So that, so that will go on top of that? Yeah. We use a 10 ton Merlot, pick the whole frame up here, and then put it inside of that frame. And it will end up assembled like you see the, um, the drills at the back here. Yeah. Um, with the frames mounted in. You can see this one's having depth wheels or the wheels on the front as opposed to discs. Yeah. And you can see the Claydon Time sets up setups in the back there. Yeah. And the depth control wheels in the middle there to do the main depth control. And you're, you're, you've got, I'm looking at your sort of finish and your paint. What is it, powder or, or wet? Yeah, it's all wet paint. Yeah. Um, we'll go down and have a look look in the wet paint bay. Um, everything is shot blasted, so it's 100% clean. Yeah. Two coats of undercoat yeah. and two coats of top coat. Do you know the microns? What thickness? 120. 120, right. So we have 120 microns. We have machines out there, and you may have noticed some of those machines 10 years old. Yeah. And the paintwork is still, still immaculate. It's wet paint for you. Yeah. It holds really well. Better it's than powder coating? We, we tend to think so, yes. Yeah. We like the wet And we'll have a, a centre row of posts, and then there's two 36 um, two 18 metre bays, 36 metres long. So, so how, 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 so say again, how many bays? So they're, they're 36 metres long and 18 wow. metres wide. So there's, there, so we'll actually have like four bays. There's two doors at the other end, which will be 18 metres square uh, for production. And what are you going to do in here that you're not doing in, 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 in that one? No, no, we'll be doing the trail drills in here and they'll have four cranes in. Once, once they've got the shot, Oh, so that's, that's not painted? Not painted. That's just shot blasting. So that's what clean metal looks like when it's been shot blasted. I'm ready to paint it. You can see it's got, it's made the grain of the surface, so it's nicely like a sandpaper type finish. You've got one or two uh, uh, nearly sharpish edges there, but I suppose... It, it, it's normally the welders um, do a little bit better. A bit of chamfer on the edge. But what we've, what we're looking at doing is, is getting two fetters in to save a lot of time in the weld shop yes. and have all the components fettered. Yeah, um, looks good. We're then taking it to the paint booths here and you can have a quick look in here. Yeah. And um, this one's got ready to... Thank you. That's only been blasted, alright? Just blasted, yeah, yeah. right. So, so basically, what they'll do is uh, bring it in here and you feel it's lovely warm in here. Yeah. They'll make sure it's 100% dry, it's been blasted, and you'll put two coats of undercoat on here. Yeah. So spraying it twice, all by hand, and then cook it. And then after that, you'll put two top coats on and then recook it again. So it's all baked on. So that's what gives our paint that really, really long Really hard, and hard finish. And so this is a second hand eight meter. Uh, Claydon's have got in and seed only. How many ton, Jeff? 5,500 litres of hopper, so, so you'll probably get in the region of five ton in five there. Five ton in there. Yeah. And you're saying about the depth control of the whole drill yep. is on that one cylinder? Just on, the, on this one, one cylinder, we have these spaces we pop in here, and this controls the depth of all the wheels along the back so that you only need to adjust here when you want to change That is so it. easy, isn't it? So easy. And uh, to change the fore and aft, we have these little links in here to hold the discs down tighter to cut through cover crops. Yeah. And uh, literally a disc in front of every time. I see these discs, they've got shoulders on, compared yeah. to your they, cut away discs. Yes, that's right. They, they, the shoulder we use to control the fore and aft of the frame. Right. So we use the weight of the frame to hold the discs in. Yeah. They're all on the rubber suspension mount. And, and of course we then have the Claydon Tyne and A-Share um, following plenty of clearance in there for getting any crops yeah. through and the ski boards on the back and the power. The other thing I've noticed straight away here is really good is the metering unit underneath here 
for emptying out and putting a bag underneath. That's if it. you've got hop any seed left in the hopper. Yeah, just pop a bag under there. And also we've got the hydraulic drill bar so you can actually jack the, the drill up to get your bag out as well. So you push the hydraulic drill bar right. here and push it down on the back of the Floats. Uh, by cord metering with a curry fan and you can the seed back. Yeah. And all through to the pipes. 38 Yeah. And we've got nine, nine and a half metre, was it nine, Jeff, or nine and a half? Nine metre straw harrow. New out this year? New out this year, we ran one on the farm that's gone extremely well. Yeah. We're very, very pleased with it. It's a um, three point link, linkage yeah. mounted, so you know you can, you can cover a bit more ground than you can with a seven and a Yeah, 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 good. So we've got a row of tarot blades here. Yeah. And you can see the, um, the hoe blade. And we can this down on the ground and it shears all of the black grass off. So oh, as see. we lower it down, it winds the spring up. So looking at these on the floor in the work, Jeff, yep. you've got, you mentioned about this, the little wingtips coming up. Yep. And that's to shear the weed seed, the, the weeds. It. The weeds just near the row. And yep. just lift them out of the ground rather than just cut round, half a cut underneath them. And yep. them up and yep. them out. It does a better yep. job. Yeah. Yep. And uh, you can see this is a, a brand new one. Go straight on the front of the tractor and away you go. How many are you moving these a year, roughly? Well, we've, we've built 25 here this year. Yeah. And uh, they're all, all due to go out very shortly, ready for this season. So um, it, it really depends on... They're, they're relatively new to the market. It's a job to gauge the market. Yeah, yeah, we, I bet it is. We can make them fairly quickly. So we've got 25 here ready for you. Ready to go, wouldn't Ready to go, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... And then you can see over here, there's some three meter ones lined up there. A couple of four, four, meter drills. four meters. Four yeah. meters. Yeah. Um, Which is your most popular model? It, it, it's Four a job of trees. Probably, we've probably sold more threes than anything because a three will drill 50 acres day in, day out. And yeah. If you get 10 days, you soon have 500 acres in with one. So even a farmer with you know 1,500 acres could drill the whole farm with a three meter. Yeah. But you know he'd have some really long days and a good crop spread. It'd be no problem. No. Um, so. The good thing is, is that you don't have to make a seed bed in front. You can just go straight in and drill it. Yeah. And, uh, so you decide when you're going to start drilling and get going. 50 acres a day in a standard day, good day, you might do 60 or 70. Um, you know, so, servicing yeah. it with the seed and everything. So real cost effective, versatile. Very drill. cost effective and versatile, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we've just had a fantastic five hours, something like that, is it? Yeah, I think so, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Really interesting morning. Uh, learned a lot about your machinery. Fascinating history about the company as well. Jeff, thank you for everything. Really interested to see where your company's come from, where you've gone to. And uh, when we look here, we've got a crop of wheat here, which we'll just look at. It's been it's been straw harrowed four times. No, no. twice. Oh, twice. Yeah, yeah. and then, and then uh, drilled with your uh, four meter. A six, meter drill. Six, six yeah. meter drill, that one. Six yeah. meter mounted. Six meter mounted. Yeah. It's a new evolution that drilled that field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, fascinating. So, we're going back to Lincolnshire now. Um, you're going to come on our drilling day. Yes, on our direct drilling day. That. That'll yeah, be great yeah, to see yeah, you both yeah. there and bring Well, I your... doubt whether I should be there because I may well be abroad. Oh, will you? Yeah. What, sunning yourself? Oh, yes, probably. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, but you're going to come with that and you'll come, Jeff. I'll try and get there if I can. Yeah. Tag will definitely be there. Right, that's great. Them. Yeah, yeah. And so, I'll get there if I can that's well, on, so. I think, at the minute we're looking at the 6th of April. 6th of April. Um, but we're a little bit late, but we wanted it. We want sort of then so we can get a lot of farmers there and hopefully everybody's got oh, the work done. So, we'll get you there and see what it's like. Certainly, Andrew, if I'm around, then I'll come up. But I think I've got drills to start oh, off and thank you. work to do across yeah. the water.
But fascinating day we've had, a lot of insight into your company, which is really great to see. Some of the slides and presentations, Simon, that you've just showed us in there have just blown my mind. You know what we're looking at yeah, costings yeah, and yeah, yeah. looking at carbon and fuel yes, and everything. Yeah. So thank you guys. That's great a morning. Pleasure. Thank, Real you. Pleasure. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Pleasure.